Hello, how's it going? My name is Benyam Ephraim, and this is the Back to Back Sui Show. So this is our first podcast. We're trying to kind of figure things out here. Um, but basically, what the whole idea I want to have behind this podcast is to help people in the field of software engineering find the job of their dreams. That is what this whole thing is about. And I see this podcast as a medium to allow myself to interview people from all different backgrounds, software engineers, recruiters, hiring managers. This podcast is for people in the field of software engineering, technology, who want to find the job of their dreams and just getting the experiences of a lot of people in this space. So that's what this is all about. I have a YouTube channel called Back to Back Sui. Um, I do some teaching over there, but this is kind of the more human aspect I want to have to this project where we interview um, actual software for engineers and hear their real life experiences. So if that's something you're interested in, then this podcast is going to be for you. Today, we have a very cool guest. His name is Gurav Sen. I say his name wrong sometimes, but anyway, I will be putting um, show notes at back to back com slash show one. That is B-A-C-K-T-O-B-A-C-K-S-W-E Com. Gurav is a really cool guy. He has a YouTube channel that at the time of this recording has about 86,000 subscribers, a lot bigger than what we're doing here, but he has really cool experiences to share with us. He's a software engineer at Uber. We'll hear all about that in this podcast, but enough of me talking. Let's get straight to the conversation right now. Gurav Sen, for, for those who don't know you, introduce yourself to the audience. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am a YouTuber uh, who's really interested in programming and especially when it comes to system design or algorithm. Yeah, that's that's pretty much about me. I work at Uber as a software engineer uh, to get, you know, to make ends meet. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't live on computer programming alone. Uh, and yeah, uh, before this, I was in Brickty as a platform engineer. The role was pretty similar. And currently, I'm working on finance systems and making sure that the money goes where it belongs. Nice, nice. So, kind of, I want to, I want to take it back to how, how did you get into um, computer science? How did you get into programming? Um, what were your first small projects? Like, how did this all start? What happened is, in India, when you're around 18, you have cleared your 12th standard, uh, and then you need to get a college. Uh, for your higher education. So nearly everyone does their higher education here because the job opportunities are much better if you are a graduate. What happened is I had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't even know whether I wanted to do engineering or something else. So like a like a sheep, I went into the college. <laughs> I saw that what's the, what's the best subject? What's the most sought after subject? And what's the most sought after uh, stream, let's say. So it was engineering and computer science. And the, the form that I filled, uh, in terms of like, what's your preferred field in engineering was computer science, mechanical, and I think electronics came third. Uh, and it was in the exact same way that I saw it, uh, that, that people were filling it. So there was, there was really no thought process over here. And this is just eight years back. So that's who I was. And after going through college, after seeing that these decisions are really important and we should actually invest more time and effort into them, um, Luckily, I'm not regretting that decision. I'm really happy taking up computer science, but it could have gone very, very differently. So that's how I actually ended up with computer science. And <laughs> there's a lot of people who ask me, did you start computers really young? And no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, so kind of the way I got started was I was um, 10 years old and mm -hmm. there was a, uh, not 10 years old, wow. in 10th grade, sorry. <laughs> but um, I was in 10th grade and I really wanted to build a mobile app. I don't know if you remember the app Flappy Bird, that app yes, came out yeah. that game. Yeah. So I started with that. I went to my computer science teacher. I was like, how do I code? And then a series of events happened. And then I made my first Hello World Android app. And I remember running down the steps to tell my parents. And it was funny. Just text, Hello World, white screen. That was my first thing. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, it's so actually you... crazy that, that mm -hmm. you say that because I, I really like your story, Benjamin, because what happened with me is... Uh, our teachers had asked us to print some sort of a pattern and I wasn't getting that pattern, but I felt like I found a more beautiful pattern in terms of the stars that we were printing. And it's very similar to hello world in a way. 
but mm-hmm. yeah that was something i was really proud about and that's that's what happens yeah yeah and that's that's the cool thing like and no matter what stage someone's at in in the learning process like being proud of like the work you do um like i was just as proud of that hello world app as i would be if i built like a full website now with a back end mm-hmm. and all that stuff front end um but yeah Okay, cool. So you you chose your career, it turned out fine, or you chose your path, it turned out well. What were some of the first uh, languages th- slash frameworks you got into? Um, what what took your interest? Did you build side projects outside of school? Um, kind of where did you gravitate in terms of technologies? Well, at the start, I used to complete my practicals and make sure that uh, I was coasting uh, towards a degree. But Later on, what happened is uh, I started picking a lot of interest in computer graphics. So that was the first thing that I actually started making projects on. And uh, one of the one of the projects I made was on XNOs. So it's a very simple project, but for a for a person who's just started off with computer science, it's it's like the hello world. Oh yeah, I'm really proud of this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and oh, I wanted it to be smart. I wanted it to be the best that I could make. So I started adding artificial intelligence into it, uh, mm-hmm. and it actually beat my professor twice and that really made me proud so wow. soon wow. my intelligence shifted from computer graphics to ai uh, mm-hmm. and with ai you you have a lot of algorithms uh, and I, I guess i'm a really fickle person because from ai i moved into algorithms mm-hmm. and uh, on the way there were quite a few projects that we were doing uh, nearly all of them you know are just the standard software projects where you have a requirement and then you get it done but we were trying to stuff in our algorithms or our expertise into those projects so we were trying to mm-hmm. find requirements where they went you know required uh, mm-hmm. but that's how that's how the whole uh, college went past mm-hmm. and yeah those were the projects mainly okay okay so we're reaching the end of college and what what was the um your scenario in trying to find work because you did have a role at morgan stanley you had a role at directy and now you're at uber so did you enter morgan stanley after college or after college yes okay so kind of take me through that process was it something where you had it directly lined up did you have relationships there did you apply what was the prep process like i'm sorry i'm stacking these questions but i I just want to generally go through that yeah (laughs) <laughs> no, uh, when when you said relationships, I, I, the first thing that came to my mind is, did I have a relationship with anyone over there? <laughs> so Mong and Sandy, they came to our college uh, for pool placements. Usually in, in in colleges in India, I've heard about the colleges in the US being something like students apply by themselves. Over here, uh, companies come to the colleges and they try to pick up some students. The good colleges get this a lot. The Average colleges like mine uh, ha- have some difficulty getting attracting companies, but mm-hmm. it does happen. So Morgan Stanley had something like a pool placement where 15 or 20 colleges uh, actually send their best students to to get interviewed, uh, and you need to clear a test for that. So that's what happened with me. I cleared a test. I, I went to their office, and mm-hmm. their interviews were crazy because uh, I-, I still wasn't into problem solving and algorithms so much. So it was okay. based on my projects mainly that uh, I was able to clear this one. Uh, after Morgan Stanley, I had nothing to do. So, mm-hmm. what do you do? Sit at home and play com- Counter Strike entire day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And apart from the Counter Strike, there was a little bit of uh, programming. So that's where the mm-hmm. algorithms bit comes in. And uh, Direct I then contacted me saying that your code chef performance is pretty good. So mm-hmm. after after Direct I, yeah, it, it was a long time in Direct I. I think uh, I spent three and a half years over there. Um, mm-hmm. And then it was a shift to Uber. Okay. Taxi driving is for me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool, cool. So, okay. So Morgan Stanley, you went there, you did the process, and you kind of floated on the fact you had some really cool projects going for you. And what? And you said it was algorithmic questions, you know, like data structures, correct? Yeah. Okay. That okay. was crazy. So, uh, Benim, I, yeah. I don't know. Uh, do, you, do you guys prepare for uh, your interviews through sites or is it mainly through your coursework or uh, what's it like usually over there? Yeah, so so you have the standard curric- curriculum where you'll have your introductory, object-oriented programming, getting your fundamentals down of like the core aspects of programs and how they work. Um, mm-hmm. And then you get into algorithms. I took algorithms. You can take it between 
at least I'm talking University of Maryland College Park here. Um, but you take algorithms around in your like second year ish. And the thing that shocked me is my first year, I did very badly on these algorithmic type questions because what we learned in class was were the fundamentals of computer science, but not like the leak code ask questions where you need to do all the data structure stuff. And I was so unversed in those. Yes, we did our common traversals. We did all that stuff, but I was just so unprepared. And I think that's kind of the reason this whole project started um, because I want to increase that awareness about this stuff and the ne necessity of study. But what I found is I did most of my studying through leak code and that kind of stuff. But then again, University of Maryland is a huge school. Some people don't even go through that algorithmic process. They have, um, we have a career fair. Recruiters come to our school because it's a pretty big school. Um, companies like Google, Facebook and stuff, big companies and sm small guys too. Yeah, most of what we learned in school didn't really directly map to the interview. And that is kind of like a, a painful thing. But now that I'm in algorithms, a lot of the stuff we're learning now is mapping to the interview. But it would have helped me during first year season, uh, second year fall. And now we're in we're in I'm in the spring of my second year. So, yeah, that's kind of the like situation here. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my friends who are in the US uh, who have gone there for the higher studies uh, masters. What they tell me is that. The things that they learned here in India uh, don't went so good i mean uh, they they don't apply that knowledge in their master's education which is what it should be like it should be a transition it shouldn't be a, a step function uh, and they tell me that there's no practical application of the things that we learn here which which i highly suspect i mean to be true uh, that we learn a lot of theory but we actually don't encourage students to practice it so uh, i i think the quality of education in the us is really good in that sense that you actually get to practice the, the stuff that you do and there's a lot of emphasis on practicals. Is, is that true or is it different? In terms, in terms of computer science itself, um, <laughs> in terms of computer science itself, I would say a lot of it's theory. Basically everything uh -huh. we do, are you, are you saying the concrete is like, you know, your frameworks and like concrete development tools? Is that what you mean? What I mean to say is that we are tested on our theory uh, tremendously to the point that it almost comes to memorizing things. Uh, while it seems like over there, there's more emphasis on the concept, the basic, like, like you said, the fundamentals of computer science. Now, mm -hmm. if I'm testing it in an Indian college, uh, what tends to happen is that there's a lot of emphasis on getting things perfectly right instead of getting the concept right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but, but it's difficult to compare, you know, I mean, I haven't been. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. We both need to swap places. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, okay. I think one of the first things that I noticed the most about you is you're very passionate about what you do. The first video I ever saw was the egg drop problem. And here's the funny story about that. I was, this was first year and it was my first on-site interview. And this was for the Microsoft uh, Explore internship, if you've ever heard of it. But it's like a freshman sophomore program and it's just like a 12 week, I think, internship, eight, 12. Actually, that's probably wrong. But short internship first year second years and i remember right before the interview i i was like looking for problems and i see i see this crazy dude with like frazzled hair and and i see a ton of equations on the board and i'm like i gotta i gotta do this problem this is the problem i need before my interview and i click it i watch the whole thing and that's how i got introduced to you um but but yeah m my question is what makes you, what makes you so passionate why are you so into computer science because you did kind of not purposefully find your way into it, but you seem to have a very intense um, liking for it. Where does that come from, if you can pin that down? I think I really enjoy making uh, things happen at, at will. So the computer is the only thing which, which responds to it. If I go to a human being and say that you're going to do this now, yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Forget about humans, computers. computers. <laughs> It's like it's like you're uh, this master hypnotizer, and you, you make these programs which work mm -hmm. exactly as you want them to. That's one thing I really like about computers; they're dependable. Uh, but more than anything, I think it's when you start challenging yourself, and uh, these algorithms or problems are really challenging. I'm sure I don't behave the same way if uh, I'm asked to, let's say, do something which is mundane or or boring, you know. But it might be computer work, but I, I won't be super excited about that. 
while these things seem like toy problems, they, they are literally toys that we play with. So uh, that's mm -hmm. the reason why I'm always excited that, wow, I'll look at this new concept come up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Okay, so let's take it back to your um, career slash your working history. So we talked about the pre-college years, the college years. We talked about Morgan Stanley. And then you said a company called Directy found you mm -hmm. and you were a platform engineer there. So what kind of were the roles there? What was the like team dynamic? Um, just go into like your day to day there and, and kind of how did you integrate into that environment coming from Morgan Stanley? So at Morgan Stanley, it was a, let's say it was a business enabler role, which means that you are supporting the business, but you aren't the rock star. <laughs> so to speak. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice company to work for uh, in the start. I mean, I, I felt like I learned a lot of things initially. Uh, mm -hmm. But once I moved into Directi, the, the way that they build their systems was completely different. You see that, you see that in Directi. There's a lot of emphasis on casual dressing, casual seating, casual conversations. But there's a lot of emphasis on getting your code correct and getting your design right. So that is one place where I learned uh, what large scale systems are, although the traffic is not as much as nowhere near as much as Google or, you know, Uber or Facebook, but you still get to learn a lot just through principles. So it was a big change in that sense. But to be fair, I was in Morgan Stanley just for four months. So mm -hmm. it wasn't such a huge shift. The main things I did in Morgan Stanley was party with the, with the newly found money that I got. Cool. <laughs> so Benyam, uh, what about you? Are you uh, doing any internships or have you, have you, worked on computer systems earlier and what's your experience like? Yeah, so I, I definitely don't have the same um, esteemed uh, record as you, but not a worry. <laughs> I interned at a small startup um, locally. I did like back end work with Node.js. I was pretty, I, I don't think I was the best, like I wasn't that good of a developer because I think I didn't apply myself that well. And it was my first like thing writing code for being paid and it was the most odd thing like i i was like this must this can't like be real but um so that happened and then this summer i'm going to be interning at twitter in san francisco so the thing is with that i really think i got lucky with that and okay yeah i do the channel it's it's growing and i'm teaching people and people are saying i'm getting offers thanks ben but the thing is like i started being so bad at all of this stuff like i i don't think i'm the most intelligent person it's just that i i i found a way to go from really bad at the problems to becoming decently proficient enough to get an internship and the twitter thing was really it was kind of one of those chance things so it was the last i think it was the second to last onsite i did during the fall season in 2018 so i did an onsite at capital one i failed that terribly i think that's the onsite that made me want to start this channel um, I did a onsite at I th Morgan Stanley in New York and I forgot where else. There was probably one other onsite and then a ton of hacker ranks, online code assessments. I failed yeah. the Airbnb one horribly. But yeah, and then the Twitter onsite came and yeah, from there that's that's kind of that happened and somehow I got an offer there. So yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing. I don't have that long of a yeah, I'm still young obviously. Um, I haven't course, really. Yeah. But um, actually, this is a funny story. I, this is just kind of off the record here. It was funny. I as soon as, so I did the Morgan Stanley thing. I think Friday, and or or a Thursday, and I f right after that I flew to San Francisco for the Twitter thing. And I walk oh. in at three a.m. The interviews at like nine a.m. and oh. it. And it was a room, and we were supposed to share a room with someone else. And it was hilarious. I walk in the room. Oh, there's two beds, obviously. But it's just in the dark, and I just see some guy on the other bed just rolling around. And, like, he must have been scared of freaking, like, random uh -huh. guy walking into his room. But, yeah, that, that was funny. And then and then I, we got sleep. We woke up, got breakfast and stuff. That was funny. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that was just a funny story. I, that reminded me of that. But, um, yeah, that's basically what I've been up to. That's great. Uh, and uh, now that you mention it, uh, when I started off with system design videos, I'm sure, and even now, of course, I'm nowhere near good. So there are senior engineers who teach me system design and can teach me system design for the next many years. But the important thing is that uh, I see myself developing. And uh, even when I was making algorithms, when you're doing it, when you're teaching, 
you are developing as a person so mm-hmm. that's the most important thing and that's the reason why you have these offers and that's the reason why people are wishing you so much good luck because they are seeing that you are working hard and there is i mean talent is is something which is quite cheap uh, hard work is something which is really rare so mm. that's what's working so yeah, yeah that was a really good quote i like that all right so we covered college morgan stanley we covered directy so here is i think maybe the most fascinating thing what was your transition like from directy to uber how did you make that jump um what was the interview process like uh, <laughs> i love how it's this format i just keep throwing questions at you and you're just but yeah what was what was it what was it like how did you make that transition well i was thinking about shifting for a while at rectai because uh, i had been working on uh, one of the systems in flock i was working on the server side uh, in one of the parts of rectai which is flock it's a chat based application so i had worked on quite a few systems over there and i kind of knew the architecture quite well um uh, what had happened is because the system was stable and we were focusing more on getting it out to the users uh, there was a there's stability in the product uh, and as an engineer you're always looking for something which is you know there's a lot of churn there's uh, there's a scary moment so that you learn more over there so uh, i started looking for a different role and then interview bit came along they're like you know we're going to refer you for free <laughs> because you make videos <laughs> and <laughs> that's where uh, i i got referred uh, at uber for an interview um i i gave their online test and went through the process it, it, there were five interviews i think in uber uh, two of them on problem solving and algorithms they were quite similar uh, one was on system design uh, that was that was interesting uh, and there was uh, one with the hiring manager Uh, and one with uh, which was a bar raiser so the bar raiser also had system design i was kind of lucky over there <laughs> <laughs> so did you just excel at the system design ones was there like trouble or was it just like smooth sailing so um, from my perspective yes i felt like it was smooth sailing it was more of a conversation than you know a, a set of um back and forths uh, it, mm-hmm. it seemed like i i i talked about the entire system and then i looked and they said all right <laughs> this is okay yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Uh, but it it might be that they might have seen something missing over there i i can't really say i don't know about the exact uh, you know results but yeah i mean so they must be pretty okay happy <laughs> in that sense about the okay. algorithms though even, even they're yeah. quite quite simple uh, if you are if you're preparing for a while so one of the things that happens when you start teaching is that you're constantly uh, learning new things uh, including the including the material that you're actually going to be talking about so mm. that's really useful i actually found it extremely useful when giving my interviews uh, mm-hmm. yeah the most challenging interview that i found was the hiring manager and the bar raiser the bar raiser had some subjective questions and uh, the hiring manager is interesting <laughs> <laughs> what happened well uh, i was asked you know uh, how do you how do you work what, what are your working styles uh, how much time do you give to testing uh, how do you bring the junior engineers up to speed is there a point when you have had issues with the team and stuff like that so there's a lot of subjective questions which are asked and mainly they're trying to figure out your personality uh, mm-hmm. but you know I, i wasn't i guess prepared for it uh, i hadn't thought about it so they were all off the hip all the answers and yeah yeah mm-hmm. that's what happened then <laughs> Okay. So you did the process, five interviews, you did it, you went through it. So after you joined, what was the what were the first 3 months like because there's the onboarding process, maybe you had to learn their tech stack. Um what was that like integrating into the team that you were placed in? Um and what what was what became your day-to-day life? Well, the tech stack is different from my previous companies. Uh we work with Go in my particular team i mean uber has tons of languages and frameworks that they work with but in my particular team we work with golang uh, as our programming language we use uh, um, among the databases there's cassandra elastic search um uh, hdfs lots of databases that we actually use so they are also quite interesting because they have their different properties and you need to kind of understand which database to use at, at which point of time uh there's some stuff that they have done on top of these databases and then open sourced it so 
the good thing is you can just go online and read about those blogs. Uh, I mean, that's what I did uh, when I was kind of coming up to speed about I think schema list is the database that that I really liked. I mean, they shot the database. So in general, uh, the first three months was catching up, figuring out how this system works. The larger the system, the more users that use it, the lesser chance that uh, it's going to be an obvious system. That it's going to be optimized for certain things. It's going to have some things just for uh, you know, this specific use case of Uber. So that's what happened. The first three months was learning, learning, learning. And now finally I'm able to give back, so to speak. So kind of kind of take me through your day to day. Um, so kind of what time do you get up? What time do you get to work? Um, lunch, go, coming home, and then that stuff. So Uber gives three meals <laughs> in office. So that's how my pretty much all my day is uh, planned. I, I wake up in the morning um, somewhere around 9, and I reach office by 11. So once I'm there, I have breakfast, uh, quickly gulp it down because there's usually stand-ups that uh, software companies have. So I, I had it in my previous company and this one too. Uh, every day, all the engineers gather together and they talk about what are they going to do today, uh, if there's any blocker to that task, and what is the status of what they were doing yesterday. So you have this progression. I mean, basically the past, the present, and any possible blockers so that you're in line for the future. Not just the engineers, there's also the product team which usually comes in. This is uh, the scrum model, I think, agile or something. I don't really know the terms, but uh, mm -hmm. a stand-up is, is pretty important, I think, for a team. So that happens in the morning. After that, there's the work that you do for that day. So uh, up till around one o'clock, depends on the team, of course, depends on you uh, when you have lunch, but I have it around one o'clock. Once I'm done with that, I kind of make sure that the work that I had promised at 11 o'clock is is completed by uh, around six. Yeah. Uh, after that, there's a sort of slow progression. Um, it might be work-related. It might be that you can go and play table tennis. Uh, there's lots of you know indoor sports that you can play over here. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, some people like the PS. So mm -hmm. I suck at it, but I, I like watching. <laughs> PS4 or Xbox? Yeah, PS4. I think it's. <laughs> No Xbox, man. Yeah, I think it. I hope it's PS4. I, I, I'm not a gamer, so. So, one, one question, people, a lot of people ask me is, how did I get so good at problem solving? And I'm not that good at problem solving. Um, they're like, how did you get to this point in being able to look at a problem, know what to do? And I, I think kind of a brief answer is, I mean, of course, like a lot of problems stump me. Like I'm not, I am. I, I need to say this disclaimer over and over. Like, I am not amazing. But, I mean, you get to a point where you see the pattern in these interview problems and stuff. So, kind of mirroring that question to you, how did you get so good at system design? We know you're passionate. We know you apply yourself to your work. How, how did you get so good? Do you have outside resources you study from? Is it all from work, that, you, that applied skill? Um, kind of how did you ramp your skill level up and what did that look like? Well, it's difficult to find uh, like exact examples of what you're mm -hmm. studying mm -hmm. yeah. immediately at work because what happens is work is related to making profits uh, in, in some sense. So, I mean, in, in every sense of that word, but uh, you have a problem, you solve it. You don't think about applying a particular algorithm to that problem. So it's difficult. I, I understand why people think that, uh, how are you so good at algorithms? Because uh, it's, it's not something that people face in their day-to-day -day life. One thing I would like to advise people who, who think about how do I get better at system design or algorithms is to look at their day-to-day -day life and try to search for places where th this is actually applied. For example, uh, consistent hashing. That's an algorithm which is applied in quite a few places. Hashing itself is a really, really interesting concept. Binary search. You know, databases have the indices, binary search. So that's, that's where I actually get my inspiration from because if there is something that I'm studying, and I start imagining how can I apply it at my work uh, or how has it already been applied uh, at work. It kind of gives me this pivot and it gives me a lot of context as to where can I actually apply this technique, whether it's system design or algorithms, both. Thank you. Okay, so kind of the next thing I'm curious about is you're an ambitious person, you're passionate. So 
where do you see yourself going in the next five to 10 years? Do you um, see yourself starting your own company down the road? Do you see yourself getting deeper into something into artificial intelligence? Like where are your interesting interests gravitating um, and kind of where do you I mean, this is a hard question to answer. You can't really mm -hmm. predict the future. You can't predict how your interests will change. But I mean, kind of no, no, just throw I, something I out there. So. That's a really interesting question, you know. Maybe two years ago, I wouldn't have been able to answer that at all. I mean, I would have given a really vague answer. But one of the things I've seen recently is that machine learning is is sort of living up to its hype now. So it's been around for a while. Uh, there's a lot of people who have said that it's the next big thing and you need to study it, you need to understand it, you need to get into it. But now I think, yes, it is the next big thing. It's going to be a pretty important part of software engineering probably in the next three years. So it's a critical part of software engineering. That's what I feel. A lot of the things like alerts, uh, we, are, we are applying machine learning everywhere. And that's that's what is really convincing me that this is an important thing to learn. So I think I'm heading towards machine learning. Uh, I hope I, I find the time <laughs> to actually uh, study and then apply it and then come back to my channel and teach that. But uh, yeah, that's the next big thing, according to me. Artificial intelligence, although machine learning and artificial intelligence kind of go hand in hand, I think it's still got some time. Uh, I think it's got some time before it becomes something we can monetize very easily. So yeah. Okay. So are there are there any uh, current you know projects or things that you're working on um, besides you know the YouTube and you love blogging as well? Um, are there any other things that you're working on maybe to strengthen your skills in maybe machine learning or are there any other projects or is it just the YouTube? No, uh, currently, so earlier I used to gym and I, I didn't look like a stick earlier, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of sticks, <laughs> I must say. But I think what's happened is the YouTube channel takes quite a bit of time. Yeah. It's it's a yeah. You must be knowing that really well, Benio. <laughs> <laughs> I know that very well. You know, it's it's crazy because I I remember a year ago or two years ago, I would watch Two Shaw Roy's videos, and I was like, "Wow, like I can do this. I can pick up the camera and do this." Um, mm -hmm. as soon you have no idea how well not you, but like there mm -hmm. is it takes so long to prepare a video to take notes to edit. How many times you mess up while recording it, um, publishing it? It there's so. It's a lot of work, but yeah, like I have so much respect for you, for Tushar Roy, for those hu over a hundred videos he did. It's just, it's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. In fact, I'm really uh, impressed and happy to see uh, people like you, you know, uh, taking up this task. It's, it's super tiring, uh, mm -hmm. especially it if is... you're going for it long term. Yeah. Yeah. At one point I was doing like one video a day, I think two months ago and oh I just couldn't keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. That is, oh my God worthy. It was, it was really bad. Like I had such a bad balance in life. I stopped going to the gym and uh -huh. I literally just wanted to dedicate my whole being to making this project successful. And yeah, that was a bad thing. I, well, not bad, but you know, it kind of takes a toll on you as a human being. It's interesting. Uh, and Yes, initially what happens is you see these videos, you see that there's so much to do. You feel like, you know, we need to bring in the, I mean, <laughs> increase velocity uh, instead of mm -hmm. instead of the other things. But yeah, it's it's important to pace yourself, you know. I was talking to uh, one of good friends of mine. He's a product manager. Uh, and I was asking him that, do you think I should make more videos? Should I increase the frequency? And he said, no, you should reduce the frequency and sell what you already made. So I, I think... All of us, we create some content which is quite good. What we need to focus on sometimes is also the marketing bit, which doesn't happen so much yeah. with software videos. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. So this is kind of a transition, but this is a question that a lot, a lot of people ask, um, mm -hmm. and it's something I've been pondering a lot. And it's, do people need a college degree to become a software engineer? And and before we go into this question, which this is a deep rabbit hole to jump into, but I mean, there's 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 that high level software engineering where I mean, it's a very wide spectrum. Like, are you talking doing like embedded systems? That's a whole different beast than just doing web development, building websites. Um, and I don't know if that'd be considered software engineering. That'd be more software developer. But yeah, do you think people need a degree to become a software engineer? And let's narrow it at a big firm like a Facebook, uh, Google and Uber. Um, do you think they need a degree for that? 
I think it'll be extremely, extremely helpful. Yeah. <laughs> that's it that's the answer <laughs> but yeah no the thing is the thing is there's there's some things that i've i've learned in in college that i would never i mean it's mostly it's a lot of theory stuff so far and i'm ending my second year but mm -hmm. i would have never like figured these things out like i would have never written assembly i would have never written my own um what is it called a pro not not processor interpreter like you write an interpreter you do all that crazy stuff literally taking a raw file turning it into an abstract syntax tree and all that stuff and making meaning out of raw text. Like I would never do that, but that's something that really makes you understand the core core, like what are computers, what is computer science, not, not computer science, but what is, what, what are programs all about at the core level? I don't know. I don't know if that's completely necessary. I mean, that's just the thing, right? That's just like an aspect you learn. I don't know if it's absolute. I mean, if you could just churn out these leak code questions and know how to answer those, I mean, I guess you could say that I wouldn't be required because then on the job you would learn your actual frameworks and, and do that stuff. But, I mean, it's still a hard question to answer. It really depends on the job, but yeah. I think that's an interesting point you make that uh, lead code or any of these job preparation sites prepare us for the, prepare us for the interview at least. Yeah, it gets you but through the door. Superficial kind of uh, preparation that all of us do for the interviews. You know, At the end of the day, we are trying to... Uh, clear a cutoff or uh, pass a filter, but as a as an engineer, like uh, you know, there's so much to learn. And I know people who are not from a computer science background, who have built an operating system entirely by themselves, and who are extremely knowledgeable. But the thing is, it took them 20 years to do that. And if there is if there is limited time that you uh, have and you want to get good at computer science, I would strongly suggest a degree. I mean, if I take compare it with Olympic athletes, I've never seen an Olympic athlete who's who's come from the wild. You know, they they run every day and they're kind of good and they learn things. But unless there's a theory, unless there's a person who's coaching you to be perfect, as close to perfect as you possibly can be, uh, I think it's a hard, hard battle that you're fighting. <laughs> I, I I don't know whether that's uh... <laughs> no, no, that's 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 a good answer. My my next thing that I'm curious about is. If you if you weren't a software engineer, what would you kind of find yourself doing? Because you said you had other paths you could take. Um, what would you end up finding yourself doing? Probably writing. Probably writing about. I don't really know. Now that I think of it, it's probably going around traveling the world and writing about things. But there's a there's a kind of boredom that sets in even with that. Everyone longs for home. At least I did uh, after I traveled for a while. Yeah, you can you can write about all the adventures you have had, although they're really difficult to find adventures. Um, so I would be writing about my experiences in college and about uh, what I see, po possibly politics, although I never mentioned it on the channel. I actually do follow politics. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's imagine that I'm someone at the very beginning of my journey. Maybe I'm coming out of high school, maybe I'm in college. What is your biggest tip to someone who's maybe a beginner just getting into programming on taking them from the level that they're at to um, working at their dream company, whether that's go to college. I mean, you already said you highly recommend college, but what could you kind of outline a path going from zero to software engineer that you would recommend someone taking? I would probably suggest them to um, do things and actually watch watch their programs work. So that's the thing which has motivated me the most. Writing a small program and it actually works. You know, it happened to you too, Benim. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that really, really motivates people. And one important thing to remember in computer science is it's not going to be magic. It's not that you will make Facebook tomorrow. So a lot of people, they encourage others saying that, hey, look at this guy, he made Facebook and he's a computer engineer, you can do it too. One important thing to remember is that take things step by step, you're really going to enjoy this, is, is my advice. Uh, and I need to prove it immediately, short term gains, you know. So probably I'll show them, um, here's a piece of code and you can, you can manipulate and make it write anything that you like. I remember my teachers when I was in seventh grade, uh, they, gave me an HTML file and they said that you can change the color, the one of the attributes in the in the tag. So yeah. I was I was changing the color and I was seeing that wow my name is coming in different colors. So that to a kid is really big. Uh, they have control and full control over the system. So I think that's how I'll start.
Yeah, and 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 allowing them to see like experience that feeling of 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 coding and like making create and creating things so that it like ignites that passion within them. Cool. Absolutely, yes. So, kind of let's get to the last three big questions I have to ask you. If you could go back to any point in your career slash life slash history, what is one of the, what is one of the things that you would want to change or or tweak? Uh, in my life, I'm not so sure. All of the decisions have led me here, and I'm kind of happy with my life, so I, I wouldn't really change anything about my career. That's an interesting question. Maybe I would have uh, started this channel a little. a little before i did not 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 even that i mean i started this channel in 2016 september and then i made seven videos and then i stopped then i took about a year and a half before i posted the next serious video i had or at least one year before i actually got back to the channel and i remember that every day i used to look at the number of subscribers i have so this was something which is quite personal to me and this was something which i felt quite happy about you know the number of lives i'm affecting uh, that i'm people i'm helping out here so i don't really know why i didn't get into it as strongly as i could have that's one thing maybe that i can improve on if someone starts a youtube channel i would say that stay consistent instead of staying you know bursts of speed and then stopping entirely that's that's not so good compared to a consistent pace that's the first piece of thing maybe that i would like to change uh, mm-hmm. and the second thing would be that i kind of never marketed myself as as smartly as i could have because even when i was posting videos initially Uh, I wasn't posting them in the right sources about corporate programming. I could have gone to the corporate programming portals and posted them. I didn't do that. I was quite slow about it. Uh, and I think it's important to let people know of your work as much as doing that work. It's also about letting them know that there's there's this stuff out there to help you out. Try it out if you like. So those are the two things which initially I didn't focus on too much. And I think yeah, that's the thing I would I would like to see different. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. All right. And then going back again, what do you think was your maybe biggest failure in in your career? And I mean, of course, there's like micro failures at work. You know, you're learning. But what do you think was something you really maybe messed up on that you wish you could, you know, change? There's nothing major as such. Uh, the the good thing about life these days is that uh, there's so many paths that you have. So even if you mess up. there's not really much to regret you can always switch or change or you know you can even change your entire stream if you like i don't really i don't really know i i don't think i've had a major failure yet <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> cool maybe cool. 10 years down the line i realize that one of these was a major failure <laughs> <laughs> this interview <laughs> no okay okay anyway yeah yeah finish <laughs> is that what yeah, the answer is supposed to be <laughs> this interview <laughs> <laughs> yes Um all right. Oh, chess, we could get into that. <laughs> okay, so you played chess as a when when did you start playing chess? Chess has been in my family for I think since the time I was born uh, to be honest. Uh my brother used to play chess uh, and he's he's about 3 and a half years older to me. So he used to beat me regularly and ruthlessly. There was no there was no play game. There was always, you know, the real game and <laughs> I just yeah. used to lose all the time. It was so frustrating. I remember this one incident when uh, my brother beat me, and it, it was too much. I had been losing for too long, so I started crying. And my mother saw me, uh, and she came over and she said that this is this is bad. You made your elder brother cry. I'm going to play against you now. And she beat him. So uh, <laughs> my brother started crying, and he he was crying pretty much all evening till my dad came back. uh and uh, he saw this and then he said that you know you made our kids cry so i'm going to play against you in chess and he beat her so mm-hmm. what ended up happening is dad was sleeping on the sofa that night and uh, the two of us were really quiet because and the whole thing happened because of chess so chess is a pretty serious matter in my family you know people take it very personally <laughs> losing <laughs> nice nice and do But, you still uh, play or yeah yeah i mean i do uh, in fact all this was play uh, or rather i should say all this was learning by yourself you know playing against the person and getting to know uh, techniques but if you're looking for a serious chess formal chess then you can go for a coach or there's this game chess master grandmaster um mm-hmm. it's pretty good that's where i learned all my basics 
and i i have played in some tournaments uh, some gold medals also <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's it's actually fun playing this nice nice all right cool yeah that is kind of all i had to ask you gurav i really want to thank you for your time thank you for doing this interview we I, I don't know if it was me or you. Yeah, it was mostly me. It, it took so much scheduling. I would just throw a time at you and then I just like, yeah, but we finally did no, it. Uh, but. Yeah, Benjamin, thank you so much actually for being so patient. Uh, I, I made you, you know, run around a lot. No, it's fine. It's fine. Hey, what's up? This is Ben. So this is something that I've never done before. I kind of wanted to experiment with this and start a podcast and, you know, interview people. So this is our first podcast. You can find the notes for this show at backtobacksweet.com slash show one. If you like this podcast, if you want to see more podcasts, uh, give us a rating. It'll help uh, the podcast out by boosting its ratings, um, getting more people listening, and it'll really encourage me to put more time into finding awesome guests like Gurav um, to do more cool things like this. It was a really interesting interview. Gurav's a very interesting person, and I think we had a pretty good conversation. And again, this was my first podcast. I wasn't the best interviewer, but I think things will improve down the road, and we can learn a lot of things from the people that I'll eventually try to bring on the show. So if you have not visited the website, check it out, backtobacksweet.com. Check out the YouTube channel. That's what I do most of. I do videos um, teaching this stuff um, for interviewing prep, for software engineering interviews. That is Back to Back Sui. Uh, that's the name of the channel. So that's all. This is Ben. Uh, don't know how to end this, but, you know, signing off. Peace. Enjoy your day, everyone. Thank you.